Alright, it's Jeff from NPRS, and I am putting together a video for the Fort DeMar Army Barracks that we investigated way back in 2010. Um, I will put all the evidence and stuff in this video, but I wanted to start off with just kind of giving you a, a little bit of the background of the place. Um, reading from my notes here, the barracks and the one surrounding it housed all the black U.S. Army 25th Infantry, which arrived in 1903. A hospital that opened in 1918 and housed the sick during a flu ep epidemic. And it was also the first and largest women's auxiliary corps in 1942. So this place basically was one of the first to welcome black soldiers as well as female soldiers into the army. So that's pretty cool history. Um, one of the background uh, stories that we heard was um, something, let's see here. Local tale says two military personnel sneaked a prostitute into the basement of the barracks, and upon hearing that officer were coming down for rounds, stuffed her into the boiler and burned her alive to avoid getting caught. Um, whether there's any truth to that, there, you know, we couldn't find anything. So, and I don't believe the prior team found anything that documented that either. But uh, it was a story that was told, so we looked into that kind of thing while we were investigating. But so I guess we'll start off, and I'll show this first clip, and we'll get going. Alright, so these first pieces of audio evidence uh, were caught actually when we first got there. Uh, first thing we did was met up with the team that was actually allowing us to go in and investigate. I believe it was Mid-Iowa Paranormal, if I remember right. But anyways, they showed us around the building and were kind of showing us where the hot spots were, where they had caught evidence, and where they had stuff happen. So during that time, we caught these two pieces of audio, and the first was an EVP that was almost welcoming us, as they would any soldier going in the building. So it was a male voice saying, going back to war, like asking us if we're going back to war. So I thought that was a really cool piece of uh, residual energy caught by our audio recorder, um, and really validating evidence. Um, and we were just getting started. We hadn't even started yet, so that was pretty cool. Um, and then the next one, it sounded like a like a child voice almost saying, I want to be with Jeff. Now, that's more intelligent. It's saying my name, it's interacting with us, so maybe a mix of both energies at the place. Um, I'll kind of go over everything at the end and explain kind of what we think, but uh, definitely two cool, cool pieces of audio, so take a listen. So the first EVP we captured, we actually caught uh, just by walking around in our initial walkthrough with the team that let us in there to investigate, and they were kind of pointing out, you know, where the hotspots were, where they had caught other evidence, that kind of thing. And as soon as we kind of went in the building, we're, uh, I believe we're on our way up to the second floor, we captured a male voice, and we believe it says, going back to war. Um, almost what they would have said to any new person walking into the building, I suppose. And although it does kind of seem like it's intelligent type as it's interacting with us, it also has a residual feel to it too, so I'm hard to get that. So um, a lot of the other evidence we feel was residual as well, so that's kind of what we're going with on this one. But. So this next electronic voice phenomenon capture uh, was still early on in the investigation. It was again caught on one of our audio recorders. I think we were still finishing up, getting some of the equipment set up and that kind of thing before we actually got in there and hit it hard. But um, to us it almost sounds like a female or possibly child. And it seems to be saying, I want to be with Jeff. And um, that is obviously intelligent as it said my name and I can still remember hearing that for the first time in the initial realness that comes with that but give it a listen let me know what you think
so the next two clips are basically the first one's just us dealing with pesky raccoons who did not care that we were there they were not scared of us one bit so you can see our frustrations on that and then uh the next clip is up the gun range on the fourth floor which is where a lot of the evidence was caught um i feel like a lot of energy might have been attached to that in some way but um as you'll see later uh a lot of the evidence came from that area, so I just kind of wanted to give you a visual of where we were, so to say. Oh! Where's he at? He's calling the hole. Oh, you just count out if he's in the hole. He's going now. He's looking right out there. Oh, shit. Is he in the hole? Shoot a picture, see what they do. I'll take some photos and let's everybody just sit up here, we'll go lights out, have an EVP session as soon as I get these IR, IRs changed. Okay, so these next two pieces of audio were caught right there, uh, where I just showed you in that last video up on the fourth floor by that shooting range. Um, and it's two incredible pieces of residual uh, EVPs again. Um, when I say residual, I mean it's just kind of energy that replays itself. There's no intelligence to it. Um, an intelligent haunt is like somebody who has passed that you know, that interacts with you, knows your name, that kind of thing. Residual energy is... I guess the best way to explain it is like a battery that uh, holds energy and just draws it out. Well, locations are said to do the same thing. Whether you're there or not, it don't matter. It just plays this event from the past over and over. Um, and I believe that's what these EVPs were. Um, the first one, uh, first one said, go back, it's a mine. And then a second voice comes through and says, the F word, fuck. Um, crazy I mean that's just crazy evidence I'd still shake my head when I hear that I it blows my mind that we caught that up there so it had to be some kind of energy again attached to either the location or that area that object it's the only thing I can think of and then the next EBP by the way both these were caught on a, a Sony camcorder that we had just left run up there nobody was up there at the time it was complete silent so these come through at that time which makes them even more credible um, but the second one says, tell your captain. So, again, relevant to the location and everything. So, pretty cool piece of ed evidence. Take a listen. Here's another EVP we caught at the barracks. Um, it's easily on my top, I would say, five EVPs we've ever caught. Um, we were up. Oh, stairs on the fourth floor and there was an old gun range like target practice range thing up there I'm not sure that that's where they actually shot it but it was stored in the building there and um, we started asking questions doing EVP sessions that kind of thing and you can hear the voice come through it's two voices and the first both male we believe but uh, the first one says go back it's a mine and then you hear like a screaming fuck um, really cool capture. I, obviously residual energy. I don't know. We couldn't really figure out if it's attached to that gun thing or just somebody in the building's emotions. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of theories, but um, it's definitely a cool capture and one of my favorites. So take a listen.
but this was actually captured on a Sony handheld infrared camera that we had left stationary up there and this was caught on the audio of that camera um, again it sounds like a residual male voice but different from the last one and it sounds like it says tell our captain so um, again more residual energy in that area uh, take a listen let me know what you think So we are still on the fourth floor during the same investigation where we just got them two AVPs. Um, and this is actually why we went up there and we're uh, talking right after we ran into them damn raccoons. <laughs> but um, we got two more AVPs. The first one, I believe, is saying who wants to kill him. And I think that's probably another residual AVP. Um, but it's kind of faint. It's hard to hear. Another one we caught on our camera that Johnny was actually holding and recording us with and says, I can't believe it. And that didn't have anything to do with anything that was being asked or um, anything around the area. So, again, we've got to go with the residual. Um, and there was a, a faint light anomaly, orb, you might call it. We're not big on that kind of stuff. Um, I wouldn't present it as evidence, but I still feel the need to share it just so other people can see it and give their input on it too. Um, but as far as if I was with a client and sharing this, I wouldn't present it as evidence. And again, there's some more orb videos that I'll share with you here after this one, but um, I'll let you look and you form your own opinion. But as far as we go, we wouldn't present it as evidence. So take it for what it's worth. So this EVP is interesting. Um, the first time I heard it, I was kind of hearing um, who wants to kill him. Sounds like a male voice saying who wants to kill him. But the more I listen to it, I also hear Moss Tequila. So I have no idea on this one, to be quite honest with you, but there is a voice there. So it's kind of the beauty of this whole thing. You guys can listen to it and tell me what you hear. But I'll slow it down and enhance it too at the end. So take a listen. But this one was got on our Sony IR camera. Come off the audio of that. Um, I believe it be a male saying, I can't believe it. Um, I'll just let you listen. It didn't have anything to do with what was going on at the time or any questions asked. So I'm not really sure if it's residual or an intelligent spirit. But the voice is definitely there. So uh, give it a listen. me to learn how to walk like that, bro. Nobody wants to do anything, huh? Was that a... dust? Alright, so these next two videos are just 
um, basically videos of the location, giving you a feel of where we were and that kind of thing. Uh, again, no evidence here, but I lost a bunch of video from this place due to our disc getting ruined. I mean, they were all on DVDs and that, and they got ruined, so um, I will share with you what we do have. The first clip is just of a poster that we found on up near the fourth floor. We are getting all the evidence. Um, and then another clip of on the third floor where um, the living quarters would, would have been. We did catch some evidence there too as well. Um, but uh, here's just a little video of that area. Got some very interesting stuff. Says a tight fist and open mind. What's this stuff over here? So this final piece of evidence I'm going to share with you just let me scratch my head, honestly. Um, I'm a skeptic at heart. My wife tells me I'm too skeptical at times. I can't help it. That's just how I am. But um, Jennifer had been mentioning throughout the investigation that she kept felt like she was getting touched. Like, you know, just a gentle touch on the back or whatever it may have been. And we were still pretty new to this and we were like, okay, you know, let's just kind of keep an eye on it. And... Um, we did, and shortly after she said, I just felt somebody pull my shirt enough to where it felt like my shirt was untucked. And so we were kind of like, oh, okay, well, that's that's pretty substantial. Um, and shortly after, I think it was a couple minutes after on our video camera, we caught this next piece of evidence that I'm sharing with you. And the back of her hair, if you look, it curls up and goes kind of like this. And there was no wind, there was nothing that would have caused this naturally. I, I mean, the skeptic in me wants to say, okay, well, the way she turned her head or something like that may have caused it. But looking back at it, I just, I don't see that. <laughs> it, I can't come up with a natural explanation for it. So I'll let you watch and you form your own opinion, as always. But uh, take a look and let me know what you think. Okay, so I'm just going to share my final thoughts on the place. Um, it was absolutely incredible investigating there, especially being our first investigation as a team. I mean, we had gone to some local cemeteries that we had permission to, to go to to kind of practice with our equipment and that kind of thing, but this was our first full-on investigation, and i got to say the results were awesome. Um, I couldn't be any more happy with what we got there. Um, so basically, I mean, it seemed to be a mix of both residual and intelligent energy. 
the residuals seemed to be more prominent, but there were some intelligent spirits that were interacting with us, saying our name, that kind of thing. Um, but definitely I feel there's some residual energy from the, the um, soldiers who have been there and their experiences. And it's just incredible to capture some of that on our audio. So um, I'm very happy with the way it went. And I'm not even sure that the building is still open for investigations. I don't Mid-Iowa Paranormal. I'm, I think his name is Robert. If you're still out there, man, hit me up. I'd love to come back. But anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, on to the next.